Annyeonghaseyo. Hi, I'm John from Decent Espresso. I'm the founder of Decent Espresso, and you might ask, why did I do this? And the reason is that for years, whenever I've traveled, um, I've always gone to like the best cafes in town and had the best coffee. And at some point, I decided I'm going to buy a machine and try and make coffee. And I bought a machine. I spent 2,000 US on the machine and another like 2,000 on the grinder. And for two years, I made really bad coffee. And I read books and I went on forums and eventually I just gave up, sold the machine and just went back to my Nespresso machine. Uh, then a few years later, like, okay, I'll try again. So I spent more money. I spent $8,000 on a Lamuzoko machine, a GS3. And then for like, I don't know, four months, I made bad coffee. And eventually, I found this French guy who had trained in Australia, and I took long courses with him. And then like another month after that, I started to make good coffee. And it was just, just too hard. It was like, I, I spent all this money, and I had good coffee in cafes, and it was just too difficult. And the reason it's difficult is because the machine doesn't help you at all. You just, you do all this magical stuff, and then a black liquid comes out, and it usually tastes bad. And it's really only baristas who train under someone else who's good, who learn how to make coffee. And, you know, most of us aren't going to work at a coffee shop. So, um, that was not... It's just not going to happen. It was just too hard. And of course, I had gone to a coffee shop and trained. So I figured out how to do it. So um, what I really wanted to do originally here with Decent Espresso was to come up with a 1,000 US dollar machine that made really good coffee and helped you make it. And that's not at all what we've made. <laughs> because what actually happened is I hired this genius physicist guy. Uh, his name is Ray Heisman who um, studied textbooks for four months because when I said 1,000 US dollars, he said, well, you can't make it with a boiler for that price. So we have to invent some new technology. So uh, for four months, he read textbooks and then he started inventing. And for two years, we've been trying to figure out how to invent something. And it turns out we've got a brand new technology for making espresso that mixes hot and cold water in real time to give you exactly the water temperature you want. You can vary the pressure. Um, the computer shows you exactly what's going on inside the coffee, so you don't need that barista to show you and train you. And it also can do the kind of coffees that only machines that start at 24,000 US dollars can start to make. And even head to head, uh, our machine makes better coffee. And it's just because we've had to come up with a brand new technology to make simply hot water precise and pressure precise. And it, does, it doesn't sound like it's that hard, but it is hard. And the only way we've known how to do it is with really expensive plumbing, big, heavy boiler machines. And they haven't told us what's going on inside the machines. And they've been slow and power hungry um, and very hard to run. You need a lot of skill to make really good espresso. So that's what we're trying to do with these Nespresso, it's where we've ended up, is making a machine that suddenly can show you everything about what's happening inside an Nespresso and let you change it all. So it can make good, good, so it can make good baristas much better, but it can also make people who don't know how to make coffee at all make very good coffee. And that's kind of the journey for a lot of people, is first make coffee that's at least as good as what you have in a cafe, and then over one or two or three years, make among the best coffees in the world. And the thing about Korea is, for whatever reason, Korea has decided to just jump ahead, initially just ahead of all of Asia, but now among the, the best coffee countries in the world, up there with Australia, uh, up there with the whole Seattle, Portland area. Um, and I think Koreans are both very aesthetic, they're really into flavor and, and paying attention to those aesthetic things, and very technical. And that's what coffee demands. You need to have that intensity, but also be technical enough to understand the technology behind it. 
Um, so that's why I actually have been working with Koreans in the coffee sphere, working on a grinder and burrs, uh, working with Scent One in Seoul for um, a universal way of describing coffee, and now working with Shin uh, to really work with Koreans to understand our machine and make sure that they understand, but also that we understand what they're doing and it's, it's doing what they need. Because at the end of the day, what the decent espresso machine is, is something new. And right now it's very exciting, but it's going to get in your hands and you're going to start using it and you're going to say, well, I want to do this and this. And I want to be able to work with you to move the machine forward over the next few years so we can take espresso to places where it's never been. That's the idea. So thanks for listening and I look forward to seeing you in Korea at the World Barista Championships and maybe at some of the cafes. But you know, I live in Hong Kong, it's not that far. You're going to see me in Korea a lot. We really like Korean food. And Hong Kong's not a bad place to visit. So come and see us in the factory too. Happy to accommodate you and we'll feed you some really nice soup dumplings.